Mm. Good coffee. Welcome back to the shop. My name's Russ. Uh, today I'm going to talk about my OTB ruler and how I'm using it on my table saw to zero out to get a zero point on my table saw. Now, all table saws, I don't care whether it's an inexpensive contractor saw or the most expensive stop saw that's out there. They all have the same exact problem, and that is you have only one scale, and it's set to one point that is zero on your scale. And like on my saw, that zero point on my scale, which is on my Beastmeyer fence, right here, this is the scale. The zero mark is set to where the fence on the left-hand side touches that blade. This is on zero. That is that is your zero point. So this is it. this chart, this scale is zeroed out to the right side of the saw blade, and that actually holds true no matter what saw blade I put in here because the nut goes in on the left side. So when I put the blade on and I spin the nut off, the right side of the blade is always pushed up against the arbor to the same exact point, and my scale is set to that blade. So. Even if I go to a bigger blade, a dado stack, or whatever, everything always references the right side of the blade here to the left side of my uh, fence. And that's the only scale you got with this scale. So, how many times do you wish, I really want to measure to the left side of the blade instead of the right side of the blade? And if you know the thickness of your blade, you go, that's not so bad then. All I have to do, like in this case, I use a 1 16th inch blade. Um, so that means I just have to take a 16th of an inch off every time I do the cut, right? Easy peasy. Well, yeah, it is. It's still what I call stupid math because you have to take, every time I do a measurement, make sure you're taking off 1 16th of an inch and that you don't accidentally in your mind add it instead of subtract it or take off two, 3 16ths instead of 1. <sighs> Anything can happen. When it comes to stupid math so I want to avoid it as much as possible so what I'd like to do is zero out my scale to the left side of my blade well actually I can do that very easily using my OTB ruler let me show you what I did so I have two of them here one of them is my center ruler with zero in the very center and it goes 1 to 12 in both directions and so I took this one, I actually put a hole right in the center also, so I have like a little sight glass lining up to my zero mark. And sometimes that might be handy to have, but basically I want to set this to zero. So if I take and set this in here, and line this up right to my zero mark on my scale, then quite frankly, this scale is now zeroed to my blade on the right hand side. If I want it to be zero to the left hand side, now in order to zero this out, all I have to do is shift my zero mark that way one sixteenth of an inch. So if I move this over one sixteenth of an inch, now I'm set to the left side of my brain that easy of my blade. So now if I set this to exactly six inches and I take my six inch ruler and I set it in here lo and behold it comes out to the left side of my brain of my blade is now set to the length of the six inch ruler because I have six inches here so I've actually zeroed out to this side of my blade so using a ruler like this can be very handy and once you set it up as long as you don't touch the ruler, all my measurements now will reference this side of the blade instead of the right side. Very convenient sometimes when you're doing certain cuts. Um, now what's really great about this is that I can do this over here on this saw too. Set this up right here so it lines up to the left or the right side of my blade. No problem. So what about if instead of using my left side of my blade of my fence I want to use the right side of my blade over here and I want to reference my blade 
So now I can take my blade, lift it up, set it to zero, bring my mark over to zero, and now I have a scale to the right, to the left, going from the left on the right side of my blade, on the left side of my blade to the right side of my fence. I can set this up. So if I set this right to six inches, I take my ruler and it sets right in between here to my blade, even with the blade right here. So, whoops. So that sets to my blade now very exactly. If I want to reference that side to here, then I could just move this instead of at six inches, move my ruler. 1 16th of an inch that way so that my zero was zeroed out on the right side of the blade I can move this over 1 16th of an inch and now six inches will actually line me up to this side of my blade instead so it's easy to zero this out and set it on either side of the fence using a ruler with magnets. Now sometimes you want more than 12 inches so most of the time this is going to be adequate but also if I got to be more than 12 inches I also took one of my arbitrary my generic rulers and I put three magnets on it and I can take that and set that in here so once I set this to zero wherever that mark is one zero on my scale if I need to have extra scale on this end of my scale, I can bring this in and set it here. And now I'm going to synchronize these two to each other. This one's already set on zero. I can take this and set it right at the nine inch mark later. Go on, later on. She wants a treat. Anyway, now I can take this ruler and slide it over until the six inches lines up to this inch mark and this one lines up to the five this lines up to the four so now I know that I'm at 12 13 14 15 so now these two rulers are in sync and if I take this and put this here measure up where I'm at I know exactly to go from zero to here what that measurement is this ruler can be used in conjunction with this one once I sync them up using a simple little six inch ruler to make sure this gap in here is exactly right to give me my increments to still line up. Now this ruler does not have any numbers on it yet and that's because I haven't done that yet. I'm probably going to put 13 on up to 35 on here and I'm also going to probably mark my 16th inch increments on this side like it is on this ruler eventually and when I do that that'll be a separate video I'll show you how to do that on my table at my workbench using either my anchor jig or my anchor gauge uh, somebody made a suggestion in the comment to me the other day that he thought the IG32 might work better than the anchor jig for setting for marking out a ruler and I got to thinking about it he may be right. So when I play with that a little bit, when I get done, I'll show that to you and you'll see how that really works in comparison. But anyway, this is how you set up these two rulers anywhere I want to be my zero reference. Getting that zero reference to the right point can always be a challenge. And if you think it's difficult because you're just going from one side of here to a straight blade, you ain't seen nothing yet. What happens when you start tipping that blade? Where's your zero point going to be then? Let me show you. So if I take this right here, and if you take a look at this right at right here, this black line represents when the blade is in its vertical 90, 90 degree position. Your scale down here is set to the right side of the blade. Everything lines up perfectly and your scale is set to exactly where it needs to be in referencing that point. But what happens when you tip the blade over? On this red line, I've actually tipped the blade over. Your pivot point is below this surface. Therefore, your point of cut is changed from right there to over here. 
depending on whether it's from the right side of the blade or the left side of the blade, and how tall that piece is, whether or not you want to balance that cutout to the top of the board is where you measure to, or to the bottom of the board. Let me show you what I'm talking about, and we'll see if we can set this up and do a cut at an angle and show you how we can zero it out so that we can actually set this up and get the measurement on the piece even when it's an angled piece. That's always the toughest thing to zero out. So let's let's play with zeroing this out a little bit. And if I go too fast, just yell out. So anyway, so let's take at this point and let's bring my blade up. Let's bring this to the right hand side and let's take this blade and tilt this out to oh somewhere around 30 degrees or so. It doesn't matter where we put it but I'm going to turn this out until we get to some area. It looks like 32 is the length. So now I want to cut this board and I want to put this bevel on this board but I want it to be two inches wide down here. From this edge to here, I want it to be two inches. Therefore, my zero point is going to be right where that blade is coming in contact to the bottom edge of this board. That is my zero point if I'm going to cut on this side of the blade. So if I take this and I mark this with a pencil and I can see that barely. I know you can't. So now if I bring my saw over to that zero point there we go. There's my zero point. So now I can bring this over zero this out and now I can set this to two inches and make my cut and I can make a cut so that I know that my bottom surface is going to be two inches wide and then bevel up to whatever this is. So now if I take this And if I measure here, I'm exactly two inches to this edge right here, from here. So then now the question is, what if you want to do the cut on that side? So let's, let me put the blade down for a second. And let's move it to this side. And let's bring the blade up. So now we want to cut this, but our point of reference no longer is right here at the table. Our point of reference, I want it to be, because I'm cutting it this way, on this side of the blade, I want this to be two inches. How do I do that? That is the point of my cut. So if I take a board the same thickness and I put it in here, To where this blade right there is my point of cut right at the top of this board where that blade is even with it this is now my point of cut so now if I mark this point as my point of cut let me back the blade down and let's bring this over to that line and I zero this out I now have zero set to the top of my board being zero against that blade. So now, bring my blade up, set this to two inches, and now when I put my board through here, lo and behold, it just sets right in there perfectly. This board now is set up on this side. And I can make the same cut that I made over here a moment ago. If I had done it with a new board, I could get the same cut. Because I zeroed out 
to three quarters of an inch above the table in reference to the saw. And I did it that quick and easy. So zeroing out your saw is not really that difficult. It only takes you a few seconds. Now I want to go back to zero again. So if I bring this back up to zero, bring this over, and then bring this over to zero, I'm now zeroed back out to the right side of my blade. To the left side, to the right side of my blade, to the left side of my fence, my normal setting. Just that quick and easy. Which happens to be in line with this scale in this particular case. So I can set this thing and zero it out anywhere I want on either saw I want by finding my zero point using my, my fence and referencing that back so that I can put my, bind it up to my hash mark right on my saw blade, on my, excuse me, on my fence to my hash mark. And line this up and zero it out, and now I have my scale. So it only takes you a few seconds to zero out your saw. No matter what kind of cut you want to make, you should be able to zero it out, even if you have to tip it. You can find that zero point. If you understand where it's going to be, you can zero it out so that you can make any cut accurately. I was able to make this cut accurately both from the right side of the blade and uh, the left side of the blade and the right side of the blade both without any problem. Uh, you just saw me set it up for both. So it's not difficult. It definitely doesn't take stupid math. Much better. So if you want, you can use these rulers with a couple of magnets on almost any table saw. Uh, this happens to be a Beesmeyer. It's what I have. So this works really nice. But you should be able to do this with any saw if you think about it. As long as you don't if you don't have a steel place up here to be able to magnetize your magnets, mount a piece of angle iron or something on here so that you can then magnetize it. You have to think outside the box sometime. But you can make this work. So make your own TB rulers and set them up on your table saw. This is how you get a zero clearance on your table saw, no matter what position your saw blade is, to be in zero. So that makes it really easy. If you have any comments about this, any ideas or suggestions about zeroing out your saw blade to a scale, Leave them in the comments. Um, if you learned something here or you like this video, hit that like button. Most importantly, though, please come back again because we're nowhere near done. Thanks. And we'll see you again very